All right. Yeah, let's go. Okay, the weather is terrible. It has been raining all day. I got it. Yes. All right. Let's go on. Okay, what do we got here? Your brother's friendly ex-girlfriend moved to Hawaii. You ask your brother. <laughs> been living in Hawaii two years. <laughs> How long have you been living in Hawaii? Two years. Yeah. Uh, what? No. Oh, no. Bob. Oh, no. Bob. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Game over. What is going on here? I got to start over from the beginning. What happened? Uh, hi, everybody. Sorry. I'm just having a little bit of fun before my presentation began here, playing with my, one of my new uh, Google Slides review games that I made for my students. Uh, first off, let me just say thanks for coming to my presentation here. I'm going to try to keep it interesting for you. And uh, as we get started here, let me just say, uh, I will be using today free apps. So if you have a Gmail account, uh, first and foremost, it will be important free Gmail account. Then you would have access to Google Drive, online storage, Google Sheets, which is like a Microsoft uh, Excels uh, for Google and Google Slides, which is like PowerPoint, uh, neither of which are at the same power level as the Microsoft suite. But uh, these things are... Uh, very good for free apps. I use them extensively for my classes because, well, quite frankly, uh, the students often don't have Microsoft software and my school pays for the paid Google suite. So we have uh, Google Classrooms and uh, Google Forms, everything like that, that we use to organize all of our classes. Now, a couple other things I will be uh, using in this presentation you might find interesting are a tiny URL to shorten up some of those long uh, website names and the QR code generator. You will see that I'm going to share some data with you. Uh, this was supposed to be a real-time kind of uh, workshop, but uh, it still can be. Uh, I'm only going to talk for about 20 minutes, but if you pause when I say something that you want to maybe try, you can stop this video, go ahead and you know download the apps and try it for yourself. I will also let you have some uh, downloadable templates that you can uh, hopefully scan and download from my Google Drive. And if you have a Google account, you'll be able to use those on your, uh, just save a copy of it and uh, onto your Google Drive. And then you can go ahead and mess around with them, make your own, whatever you want to make. All right. So uh, before I show you that game I was just playing, uh, I want to start out a little bit simpler. First of all, my uh, topic today, innovative slide creation and uh, using file sharing uh, with Google Suite. Well, uh, you know, with Google Suite, it's really good if you have a, a school and they've got all everything set up with the uh, people with the parameters there, then you have uh, the Google Gmail accounts for all of your students and it can be a very secure setting. Uh, even without that, uh, you can still use a lot of the functions for free uh, with Google if you have your Google account. And uh, I'm going to start out with the Google Sheets, okay? So as we go over here, this is similar to Google, uh, sorry, to Microsoft's Excel. It's a spreadsheet. Now, it doesn't look much, like much a spreadsheet anymore, but you can see there are the uh, different rows still up there. They just don't have any vertical lines right now. But uh, this can be used for group projects. Uh, this is the main page. Now, something I really want to focus on here is that uh, I want to explain the really great benefit of using hyperlinks today. Hyperlinks is my keyword. Uh, you, have you ever used hyperlinks inside of software to help you to move around smoothly? Uh, what I have here um, on this uh, sheets page is a bunch of pages. I have my main during an online class, for example, they join my online classroom. I'm using Google Meet to record this right now. Uh, first, I would take a link. Uh, I'd get a share link from uh, this and uh, I can make this so that actually anybody that is able to get to this link would be able to edit on it as well. During my class, I might do so. Uh, and once I have done that, 
uh, I would post that link into my Google Meet and all the students could click into it and they'd have a chance to get on here. All the students in real time, I could watch them all join groups. They would all join from group one to group seven, whatever number of groups you need. You could adjust this. And uh, once they have put in their you know, data here for their groups, uh, well, they actually have a hyperlink here for each of the groups. And uh, what you, they can do then is actually, if you look at the bottom of the page here, group one, group two, group three, well, instead of going to the bottom of the page to jump between the sheets, uh, you can just go to one of these hyperlinks and they can jump right to their group one page. Now, uh, whatever students were in group one, they could figure out who's the group leader. Uh, they could have their own video chat uh, link there or whatever they were going to use to you know, maybe discuss. Instead of using breakout rooms or something like that, this would allow them to go in and out freely. Uh, and you could then, as long as they have the link available for you to check, you could go and hop in and on there at any point and check in on them as well. So uh, make sure they're doing their work or whatever. But this is a good place for them to be organizing, putting up links to the projects they're working on. Uh, and you can put up a project here for each different group that they could be working on group projects together. So the main thing I want to say here is hyperlinks inside of my app uh, would allow me to jump between these pages. It makes it very easy to navigate for the students. Uh, and this is going to be something that's going to be very important when I go to some of the other software. Um, this, I really felt, was a great tool during online classes, the group projects organization spreadsheet page. It gives everybody somewhere to meet together online digitally, put in their information. You are able to give them uh, assignments and everything through uh, this if you put up links for those here. Uh, but I'm not going to go for very long. I only have 20 minutes, so I really want to move on. Uh, if you're interested in this uh, spreadsheet, actually, uh, I have a deadlines page in here as well. I would put in the group project is due by this day, and they could come and check when the deadlines were and all that stuff. And uh, right here, there's a QR code. This is the QR code for this template. If you want to stop your video, get your phone, uh, you can get that link and uh, it is open to anybody to download, so you're welcome to go ahead and take a uh, copy of my group projects spreadsheet. And uh, that will be the first thing. I got some presents for you all day today, all right? So I hope you're going to uh, be able to enjoy that. Now let us continue <laughs> uh, on to the next step here. So the main uh, thing I wanted to show you here today was uh, Bob's Adventure. Now, uh, what I had done is I was using presenter mode, uh, so it looked just like I was playing the game. Uh, what I use, this is just like a PowerPoint, uh, except it's in, made in the Google app version. And uh, there's little bits of animation and stuff. If you were to start this from the beginning, uh, we'll use the presenter view. That way I can do it in a separate window here. I'm going to hide my presenter part here. Uh, you might have seen Bob uh, run by here. Sorry. Uh, let's go back to the beginning here. Uh, so this is Bob's adventure review. Uh, I have some simple animations in there. Again, this is not as detailed as PowerPoint, but it can uh, choose the correct answers or Bob will die. You know, I have, I teach high school students, mostly boys and, uh, Go on. I have a go on button because <laughs> uh, I want to explain to you a few things. First of all, uh, for this, uh, if I was going to make this as an assignment, I want to make it as easy for the students to use as possible on as many devices as possible. And if I don't put buttons to go to the next slide, uh, their tendency to use the right arrow or the swipe on their, their smartphones what I'd like them to do, if at all possible, is not to swipe at all. I want them just to be able to tap on buttons to be able to proceed throughout the game. Uh, it just kind of it helps to avoid cheating. Otherwise, you could just try to swipe through and get to the end. You know what I mean? Anyways, uh, so that's what's basically uh, written here. And you'll notice that uh, the game format I've made is that uh, if you get a wrong answer, you lose a heart. Now, to use a regular slides or PowerPoint and be able to take away a heart, uh, it's a very, seems like something from programming, but it's actually just a little clever gimmick that I have uh, 
worked out. And I'm going to explain how to do that in a little bit. First of all, let's go ahead and, and continue to the next place. Save me, Bob says. Uh, we hit go on to continue. The adventure begins. One day, Bob left home to go to work. He didn't get far before he ran into a question. Uh-oh, what's this? Um, and we look here, and it says, well, the practice question, the little dog, dog jumped high in the air and hmm, caught the frisbee in its mouth. Which word are we looking for here? Click one. These are all hyperlinks to a different slide. Uh, I'm going to say skillful caught just to get it wrong, to see what happens to poor Bob here. Oh, sorry, Bob. He got struck by lightning, and he would lose a heart here, and these hearts that are up in the top corner would then slowly, you know, you'd lose one at a time. We're going to go on. Uh, in this screen, it will send us back that we can try again. Now, if I were to do the wrong answer again, it would actually be in a little bit of an infinite loop uh, until I get it right. So let's say the, uh, the dodge up high in the air and skillfully caught the frisbee in its mouth. Boom, we got the right answer. So that would jump to the slide that would have the correct answer page. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make this all today. This is basically the main thing I wanted to show you. Did this take a lot of time to prepare? It did, but I have about six classes with 40 students in each class uh, as a review of material for the Murphy's uh, Cambridge English uh, worksheets. I'd have given them some pretty hard ones, so I picked up some questions from those and put them into this format. You can, of course, download the template and make your own versions if you like. So once we have figured out how to do this, we're going to go on. Now, if there's no buttons here on an Android phone, I was told that they aren't able to just click on the slide to go to the next slide. Uh, one of the things that PowerPoint has a really good advantage of is that you can turn on or off the ability to click on a slide to change to the next slide. Okay, but in Google Slides, we don't have that option. So um, for some students that were stuck on their device, in order to allow them to go to the next slides without swiping, I had to put a button on here. Uh, otherwise, it could be kind of, you know, uh, hard for them to pr proceed. Uh, anyway, Bob's checking to go to cross the street. Uh, and here we go. We've gotten to the part where uh, it's raining. Okay, we got a question. The weather is terrible. By the way, the unit 12.1, that's from the Murphy's book, uh, just so students can have reference to where they are getting quizzed from. Uh, the weather's terrible. It, let's just say something it is raining all day. It's going to be wrong. Oh, no. It says you're going to lose a heart. When you click on that, you go back and lo and behold, you're missing a heart. It's like magic. Um, to be honest, if we did it again and then we came back again, we'd only have one heart left. You could completely ruin yourself on the first question. All right. So let's say we got the right answer. The weather is terrible. It has been raining all day. Okay, great. So let's go to the next one. Your brother's friendly ex-girlfriend. Oh, this is the one we did uh, at the beginning of the video. How long has she, right, been living in Hawaii, right? Because it's the ex-girlfriend we're talking about here. And uh, you're never late for work, are you? Well, no. The correct answer would have been, I have been late twice since I started, but uh, we're going to say I was always late. And there's no more hearts left, so game over. Click here anywhere to restart, and you come back to the very first question again. Oops, we'll click on here. All right, and we start over with three hearts, and we have to start over again. Now, uh, to kind of make a long story short, uh, if we were to... Uh, get to through all of the different uh, adventures here. Bob has to challenge his way, uh, meeting Karen and his friend Bill. Bill is just trying out to try to get Bob, and uh, he's got a bat over here. You better watch out, Bob. Uh, it got a little violent, sorry, but uh, we had some fun, and eventually he's got to face the Grim Reaper, and if he's able to clear the Grim Reapers, then... Uh, it will be the game over. Now, for myself, uh, I made this as a review. It was only kind of a bit of fun. But if the students were to uh, be able to complete this, uh, they would get to this final screen. They got the last question correct. After they uh, go on to the next one, uh, they would get this. Take a screenshot and turn it in, please. Now, 
uh, when they get to this, uh, they would take a screenshot here and I would see how many hearts they had left because uh, on this version, there's uh, three hearts. But if they had only finished with one heart, there'd be two death uh, Rim Reapers floating around and I would be able to tell quickly uh, how difficult it had been for them. Or, But I also asked in the feedback how many times they had to actually go through it before they could finish. Now, if you click on this again, the information disappears. The beauty of that being when I stop playing my game here, and of course, the students could look through the PowerPoint or the slides and find all the right answers before they play. But in order to get to that slide, and now, of course, it's only hidden here by sliding this white screen down. But um, in Google Slides, uh, you can share an item like this slideshow with your students, uh, but you can limit them so that they are only viewers. Uh, you can view it, but you cannot edit it. In other words, they won't be able to move the white piece of uh, paper, so to speak, that's hiding the screenshot image. They can't move that out of the way without downloading the data and messing with it that way. It's possible they could do that as well. If they're going to go to that length to cheat, then you know more power to them. But for the most part, uh, when I did this and I had all the students try hard until they could figure out how to finish this. They got to that screen, they took a screenshot or they got their phone out and took a picture of that. And it worked really great. Uh, they all had a really fun time doing this. Now, the whole heart trick, what was that all about? To be very honest, it's very simple. Uh, all of the questions that I made, there's a very short pattern. You can start to see there's about three or four slides that are just repeating. And I do some very simple clip art or I do some very simple uh, you know, animations and made some simple characters. And then uh, I just kept rotating that information uh, with a slide that would tell them they lost a heart. And this slide actually has a special, I think we can see it right now. There's a special hyperlink on that that would take them to a similar slide to the one they had just finished, except with one less heart on it. In other words, Oh, after I have made all of my question slides, and this could be just involving me changing out the data if I wanted to recycle it, uh, there would be a three hearts version of one question. And you go down, you copy all of your data, and you go back and you just make a two heart version of everything. And you go back one more time after and make a one heart version of all of your data. Oops, one heart version. And after that, at any time, if they got the answer wrong, instead of going to that uh, lose a heart part, it would go to the game over link. And when you get to here, uh, you will see that actually there's a clear, there's nothing you can see, there's nothing on this, but it just covers the whole page. And that box itself is my hyperlink. Um, so what you can do is you can go into the formatting part here, uh, sorry, into insert, and you look at the link here, and it will allow you to link into a different slide in your app. And for me, slide number eight is the first slide of the questions with three hearts on it. So they would go back to that slide and be able to start the game over with three hearts again. And so some students said they had to redo the game about five or six times before they finally got to the snapshot screen. Uh, now, this is the... URL code, uh, QR code, if you wanted to get the basic template for what I've just talked about. Now, uh, the difference in that is, is that I have kind of some things here that you'll want to erase after. This is the chapter title slide. Uh, this is the story intro slide. This is the question slide. This is the wrong answer slide. This is the lose a heart link. That's to switch tracks between your three hearts track, your two hearts track, and your one hearts track. And finally, the right answer track. The good thing about the ordering I have done here is if they just are swiping their way through, they will go from uh, the question to the wrong answer before they get to the right answer. So and then it would also go, if they tap the screen, this would send them off to lose that heart anyway. Uh, hopefully that will catch them. Otherwise, if they can get through, they swipe through and they will find the right answer. 
there is the potential also if they got to the wrong answer, they might just use the back arrow or back swipe to try again. And to be honest, you know, we can only patrol them so much. You hope they will just enjoy the fun of the game and, you know, try to go for it. So far, I have had not very many students that were really trying to cheat, as far as I can tell. Um, now, again, I will give you this scan link. That's the QR code to this uh, seven slide a uh, little, pretty much this is the main setup that I have here. I'm going to explain it kind of quickly. I don't know how much time I have left, but we're just going to go ahead. And uh, the first one, uh, if you are introducing some review for a certain book or whatever, you can have that as your uh, intro, intro slide, right? The, the title of whatever section of kind of questions. Uh, by the way, Bob, I made. Uh, it's just a 3D figure you can make from the shapes and stuff here and you could actually group it together and then you can make him move together in one, you know, animation and stuff like that. And um, the background and stuff like that, there's layering. It's not that difficult to do, but if you look at the way I've done it here, you'll be able to see as well as I think the animation, there's an animation uh, page part somewhere that you can look at. Oh, and that would allow you to see when there's anything moving or whatever, so you can try it for yourself. Uh, the slide with the wrong answer, again, I just kind of made it, try to make it kind of fun. Uh, if you get a wrong answer, you know, your character is getting hurt and losing the heart. But uh, the links between each page. So uh, to be honest, even if there was no links, you would think, well, it's just gonna, if you answered incorrectly, it will go to the next slide, that is true. But some students, they will hover and they can see that there's a link on only one of them. They will know that's the correct answer. So if you want to go through the trouble, uh, the links of all the runs that are incorrect uh, will go to the next slide, to the wrong slide. You can see that those three there have a link to going to the next slide. But this one here uh, has a link and uh, it's not linked to the words. If you make the link hyperlink on the words, it's going to turn the words blue and it's going to be underlined just like a link going to a website, just like these over here. So instead of that, uh, that would mean they need to click right on the words, whoops, or else it's not going to work very well. So you want to make a shape like this, and then you can make that whole shape into your hyperlink. And when you edit that, you will be able to choose, you know, I don't know, you could say slide. And you could say slide number seven. I wanted to go to slide number seven because he got the right answer. And it would automatically pop them over to the correct answer with that hyperlink. That's the beauty of having hyperlinks inside of your slides presentations. It opens a variety of possibilities. Um, and again, now when I get to this, this is where I want to uh, send them to lose a heart. Um, so what we will say here is, first of all, let me just... Uh, copy all of these one time and I'm going to then paste all of them again actually two times and what I will do then I have my three star version I'm going to erase one of my hearts that's all and I'm going to do that on each one here and then I will do it again here Oh, uh, and I think this is going to be the one heart version at this point. So you would have to set it up in whatever way you do it, that you can either copy and paste your hearts on there. It, uh, it doesn't matter, but at the, at the end of the day, uh, this is how you would set it up. Okay, so at the first... Uh, wrong answer here. Now I would click on this. I'm going to erase my link for a second and make a new link for you. I would go into insert link here. And then I will search for, I want it to link to the two heart version of the question. So that will be uh, slide number nine. Okay, just click on that. Now my link is all set. And then I'm going to go down again to this next version. And if they got it wrong again at this point, 
make a new link for you so you can see it. I'm going to go back to insert in a link into my object. It's a clear, first of all, this object has no fill, right? Uh, if I did a fill here, you know, my whole screen would be orange. But instead of that, I have a transparent box that covers the whole screen. That way, when they tap it, it's automatically going to click onto that link. And yeah, okay, let's go ahead then and put on that link. That link is going to go to uh, slide 14 this time. All right. That way, uh, and then this one, this would actually need to go to the game over screen, or this would be the game over screen. So uh, I tell you what, I can give you the game over screen here. Let's just make a copy of that for you. Mm -hmm. Oops, where is my game over screen? And that would replace this one. Okay, so that would be your, I'm not gonna link that to the other, okay. And so then if they got it wrong here, then they would go to the next page, which would be game over. And then from here, this game over one, you would wanna send it back. Uh, you'd wanna put a link in to go back to your first uh, question slide again with three hearts again, that they can start over. So we'll say slide three. Okay, uh, so then if we were to do that, okay, uh, that's your scan again for if you wanted to have this template, it's downloadable. Uh, we go on, and uh, when we go to the next question, Bob does want to die, of course. He's going to check both ways across the street, okay. And whether it has been, uh, is it is raining? No, it's the wrong answer. Uh, you go to the next slide and try again. When you do, there's one heart has been sunny no and try again one heart left had not raining and it would go to game over and then you click on it and you'd be back to the three hearts again and they could start over and try again it's a great way for them to keep practicing until they get all the answers correct uh, get to the end of it uh, and you can make your own screenshot versions or whatever you wanted to do uh, i had an animation that made it uh once they had clicked, once they had gotten to the, the correct slide with their screenshot slide, it would be showing. And the next time they click, then the uh, white plate plane screen would come up. So that way uh, it would hide the screenshot screen so they can't just scroll through the slideshow and take a photo of that, rate it from the beginning, and it would be game over without doing any studying. So that was my one of my precautions to keep them from cheating and just taking a snapshot of the uh, final screen. It would encourage them to use the presentation mode, which is the format that we want them to use to enjoy this game. I may be out of time, but uh, in case they allow me to run a little bit over, uh, I want to just show you something a little bit of, would you like a little encore? Uh, the encore would be... Uh, if you were going to do this on PowerPoint, uh, the cool thing that you could do if you used a PowerPoint is, is that there is this little button in the transition uh, part of a PowerPoint and on mouse click. Now you could remove that or you can keep it on. Uh, for this slide, it's my opening slide. I need to click to get to my actual presentation. Uh, but uh, if I click here for that one, I've actually unclicked it. So if I click, oh, oh it does work. I must not have removed it yet. So if I click on anywhere else on the screen, I want it to not go to the next slide. So I can remove that from that. And after that, then these slides should not uh, move unless I push the button. All right, we're going to try that again. I can click on the screen here. When I click on the screen here, it's not working. But if I say, let's see, I'm in trouble in a hole, call for help. Uh, let's try to make your way under round. Okay, and we're going to wiggle out of the tunnel here. Look for others trying to escape. Let's see, see where the light is coming from. No, it's not going to free donuts. Oh, yeah, this is the end of the thing. But this would go back a slide. 
run somewhere, run for the hills, run to the river. Uh, you can see different possibilities doing a choose your own adventure style as well. Uh, these are all different things you can do. This is PowerPoint again. It looks a little flash, but it's very similar. You could do the same kind of things. Uh, I did a whole different presentation on doing choose your own adventures uh, a while back. If you're interested in this one, all right, come on, twist my arm. Okay, here you go. This is the scan for that one. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can have the template for the PowerPoint. Uh, choose your own adventure slides. It's okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that it was kind of a quick run through. If you have any uh, questions about it, just go back, listen to it again. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to figure it out. If not, come and talk to me at Alchemy uh, during the live present uh, event for ACIE. I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody there. Uh, it's my first time at the uh, Asian Conference for Innovation in Education. Thanks so much for the invitation uh, from the people that are running that. So thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> thank you. Really, it's okay. Thank you. It's okay. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. Thanks so much for your time here, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my presentation.